going on people is Antoine Darden with Darden Digital bringing you some For Honor news now this is the news that all the scrubs have been waiting for they've been waiting for it and it is finally here patch version 1.03 will be releasing tomorrow at 8 a.m. for consoles I don't have any word for PC yet you guys just hold on but PS4 and Xbox One owners we're getting that patch tomorrow now I'm not gonna talk about everything in the patch, but I do wanna address like three or four main points that I took from it through, then these are gonna be the things that I think will affect gameplay the most going forward. Now we'll have all the patch notes down in the description box below, so go ahead and check those out to see everything. But I wanna get right into the main thing that everybody's been waiting for. Let me not say everybody. Let me say the scrub. All the scrubs who never learned how to properly guard break or how to properly parry the guard break have been crying and praying and sending hate mail and blowing up message boards and blowing up Reddit and game facts and all this other stuff because they don't know how to parry the guard break. And I've been a victim of it. People sending me hate mail. Oh, the guard break was was fixed and if it wasn't broken, then I would have beaten you. No, if you were good, you would win, but you suck, so you lose. So anyways, that's my rant for today. Let's go ahead and get into what it says here. It says, we reverted the guard break mechanics to the beta behavior in order to have a more usable, in order to have it be a more usable skill. Now let me stop on that right there. I like the phrasing that they use a more usable skill because the people who aren't skilled enough to use it weren't able to use it and it really separated the good from the bad i knew if i was playing a really good player because i could not guard break them they would parry it like 90 percent of the time i would be extremely lucky if i was able to get a guard break in and get that free hit so you know uh they're making it more usable. And like I said, it has pros and cons to that. Now, it will make it more accessible to people who, you know, aren't that good at guard pairing. And you know what? It's gonna eliminate a lot of scrubs who all they can do is guard parry. So I think at the end of the day, it's gonna balance itself out. I think the game is already pretty well balanced, uh, if I say so myself, because everything in the game that's done can be countered. There's nothing I face that I've just been like, like, man, I can't do it. If you figure out a little, if you just think a little bit, just just a itty bitty bit, you can figure out how to do, how to beat just about anything in the game. So it kills me when I go on the message boards and read the comments and look at stuff and people are talking about this and that is OP. No, everything can be countered. You just have to get out of your habit and learn to get good because a lot of people get caught in these habits of doing the same thing over and over and over and then they run into a player who knows how to counter it and they don't know how to adjust back. I digress. Let's move on. So the next big thing that I wanted to talk about was the Berserker and the Conqueror. Now, I don't play these characters, but I know they're very popular. They've, I've seen, I feel like they've grown in popularity. I've seen and faced a lot more of them in the last few days. I don't know why, just how. Uh, but it says their light attack recoveries decrease to prevent free guard break on block. So you are able to get a guard break once you, uh, once you got a, a good block in. And it says here, that was never the intended behavior. So, I just want to know, what do you guys think about it? You Berserker mains, you Conqueror mains, what do you think about it? How is it going to affect your gameplay? Is it going to affect it a lot? I really can't speak on it, but I don't think it's a huge nerf. Even, I even think even saying that kind of is a stretch to say it's a nerf, but they kind of just, you know, change a few things about how the player plays. Now, for the next big one and my last point of what I wanted to talk about, was the Valkyrie buff. So Valkyrie fans rejoice, Valkyrie mains rejoice. She is getting a buff, a much needed buff, I, I'll say. And let me tell you why. I think, and then you can look at some of my other videos, I talk about this a lot 
about Valkyrie because I think she's an amazing character. I think she has a great design. She has a lot of potential. I think her only downfall was that she doesn't put out enough damage. I've watched Valkyrie gameplay. I've seen people play as Valkyrie and they have to hit their character probably like 85 times just to kill them. It's ridiculous. You cannot kill anybody with Valkyrie unless unless you're just sitting there and let her hit you with that slow ass overhead, you know, wind up that she has, you know, if she gets a guard break on you. Even then, she has to hit you with like 18 of those to kill you where everybody else needs like three overhead heavies and you're pretty much dead. But uh, she has to put out a lot of damage before she can kill somebody. So they're giving her a buff. Uh, I'll go ahead and read it here. It says, overall Valkyrie gameplay update slash buff. We found that changes we made during our last technical test were impacting uh, too much the dueling abilities of the Valkyrie. She's gone from first place and win loss in duel to the last spot by far. Let's give her some love. We've made some of her moves a little faster and we've added some mix ups. Now, I think personally, this might push her over to the first real OP character. And when I say that, I say that because, hear me out, I say that because she already has a lot of great mix up. She can do just about everything. She's fast, she has range, and she has great defense. The only thing she was missing was damage. And I think that kind of balanced it out. She even has a bleed move. Like she has she has everything. She has great parries. There's nothing that she has a move that can that can make you blurry. She has everything. You know, when you think about all the special all the things that every character has, she has just about everything. Now she's getting a slight damage boost, and you can see some of the other things that they're going to be changing here with the Valkyrie uh, characters. I'm not going to read them, I'm just going to put them on the screen for you to take a look at everything that they're changing. They're changing the, uh, you see Hunter's Rush here, the recovery has been shortened. Uh, Shield Crush can now be chained to a light attack. Oh my goodness, she's going to be a beast. Now, I can bet by the end of this week, by, you know, by Friday, Saturday, Sunday comes around, you're going to see a shitload of Valkyries running around. And I don't have any problem with it because I might be one. I might be a Valkyrie running around because, like I said, she has an amazing character design, amazing move set. And if you can master her, she's pretty much unstoppable. She has a move that can put you down on the ground, and now you're gonna make that damage of the the hunter strike uh, faster. She has a dodge move, you know, like like the approach. I mean, she has everything. And you know, the last point, which uh, wasn't a real big point, but it's here, and I think some people, uh, I think th this is gonna get a lot of mixed reactions too. Uh, is the Orochi? He's getting a bit of a buff. Uh, a lot of people have been crying about the Orochi. Now I'm an Orochi main. I'll admit it and I'll say it proudly. Uh, I don't think he need any buff. I think he was fine the way he was. You know, the only thing that he really doesn't have is any kind of uh, like charge move as far as like to hurt an opponent's stamina. You know, a lot of players have uh, a lot of character, a lot of heroes have a move like uh, the Warden Shield Rush or uh, or Shoulder Bash. Excuse me. Uh, you know, the Warlord's Headbutt you know, the Conqueror Shield Bash. They all have these moves that if you're up against someone who's just blocking everything, you can kind of throw that in and knock them off. The Orochi doesn't have that. They depend a lot on, you know, in and out, timing, dodging moves, counterattacks, things like that. So, but they did get a bit of a, a, a buff. I'll call it a buff because it says right here, increase the dodge back on the Orochi's Riptide Strike. Now, I don't see a lot of people using the Riptide Strike too much. We might see it increase just a bit, but that is something that you have to time. And I think it's good to throw in every now and then just to change up the momentum, change up your tactics. Uh, and then the second one here, which I think might have a bigger impact on a Rochi gameplay, is increase the backwards, the backwards displacement from 1.75 to 2 meters. So I think that's going to be more important because with your Rochi, you definitely want to get in and get out. That's going to be your biggest strength. You don't want to stand in front of anybody because he is super, super squishy. I mean, you know, I think three overhead hits from the Viking can kill him, you know, pretty, pretty good. So, uh, and then you, you also don't have a set direction to guard in. So you have to make sure you're always on your P's and Q's with an Orochi character. And then you have some extra stuff here. They're going to change some music and things like that. But 
that's neither here nor there. Guys, tell me what you think about this update. I'm excited just to see how the game's gonna play. Hopefully we get less rage quitters. Hopefully less people are crying now. So that's why I'm excited about it. I'm actually pretty satisfied with how the game plays as is but you know what if you can make it more accessible and so and you know make it so people feel like that they're able to do what they press you know you know what they set out to do in the game then great all power to them and we will see you on the battlefield thanks for watching